All right. How about now? Can anybody hear me now? I would. Yeah. The live audience. The live audience can hear me now. No, I didn't do a startup. So you have last week's. Yeah. All right. Well, you have to log out and come back in. It's a separate show. But this one is recording, so we're in good shape. So we are here with Lala Deaton. This is Sundays with Dr. Sean. Sorry for all the technical stuff. One of these days, we're going to get it figured out. Uh, Lord will come back. He'll fix it, and then 40 seconds later, there we go. There we go. We're good now. It's working? We're live, girl. All right. So... um, Welcome, everybody. Welcome to chat. Thank you very much for signing in to chat. Anybody that uh, joins us, sorry for all the trouble. So this week has been a weird, interesting week. It's been uh, actually past, I guess, three weeks, right? Uh, so you guys, I think it was what three weeks before we were on air last time, and, and uh, it's been a, a struggle bus. We've been on the struggle bus ever since. The struggle bus broke down three or four times. I mean, my goodness, it's been one of those things. But, you know, all of that stuff pales in comparison. We were talking at dinner, and y'all, if you, um, hey, Priscilla, um, if um, she's in chat, I won't tell your mom anything you write. I don't know if she's in chat, too. So, uh, But anyway, we um, we were just talking at dinner. If you come here at 5, you're going to get, we had a lot of yard bird. We still got a lot of yard bird, piles and piles of it. They're going to be eaten afterwards. Got bunt cake. Thank you very much, Sean and Angie, the uh, the uh, Michael Strange Foundation Tucson group. Yes. You'll know the joke. That's right. Mashed taters. Oh my God. I have my fair share. Beef stew, home did. Um, we've got brownies. I don't know if there's any brownies left, but I got fruit. Got apple all kind. Cobbler. Apple cobbler, home did. You know, come on now. You do all right. You come Chocolate here. Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. I mean, we don't play. We do not play, y'all. And so. Um, oh, deviled eggs. Deviled eggs, they are gone. Uh, the rumor is on that, that they're gone. I may or may not have had something to do with that. But I love those things, Miss Gloria. They're the best. And uh, But, you know, this, this, we were just talking at dinner and um, about how many folks here have lost their moms. And Lala, you guys know, uh, if you follow me, I told you to follow her. And if you didn't follow her, you're not listening to me. Um, but, uh, Lala lost her mom, uh, Halloween night, right? Mm -hmm. Handing out candy and all. And, and her mom passed away and it's, it's just a terrible thing. What a, what a wonderful lady. My goodness. I was so honored to meet your dad before, uh, he passed and, and, uh, your mother's just, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. That's a fact. And so Lala and I have been uh, really good friends a long time and, um, it's when you're friends with somebody a long time, you know, you're going to experience some stuff with them. You're going to experience good stuff. Lala's a Nashville recording artist and, um, she's, uh, you'll be hearing a lot more about her. I'll just say that here very soon. Um, and it's, I think it's funny to me, people who perform and are, you know, professional musicians and speakers or, or whatever they are, whatever thing they do, but they're in the public eye. I think it's interesting how people make the assumption your life is perfect and that somehow or another you're immune to the hurts of life, the, the bumps of life, the really, really difficult stuff of life. But you're not, are you? Well, let me say, are you? No, definitely Yeah, not. I shouldn't have assumed. Yeah, I better check. Right here next. <laughs> I can ask her. So we assume those things, right? And, and it's kind of crazy. You know, uh, somebody the other day, uh, well, let me say this before I say anything else. I want to thank Terry and Linda for coming to my house, visiting me today, and bringing that wonderful gift. I will never forget that. Uh, very kind and generous. We love your visit, and uh, your gift is so appreciated. But, um, and by the way, thank you. Hey, Craig, we're listening listen up at Upstate New York. Thank you for listening, for folks signing into chat. Um, we, there's a lot of people who you see on an everyday basis. I'm guilty of this. I'll just admit this. I'm guilty of this. And you'll nod your head. Hey, Dr. Sean, how you doing? Great, great. How you doing? Right? But I'm not great. I'm not great at all. You know, uh, over, I've been at the edge of death for about three weeks now. And, and thank you for your note. Touched my heart, made me cry instantly. I'm a boo-hoo. 
kind of guy. But um, thank you for that. It's very sweet. Um, so what I'm saying is, is, is we put out, uh, I'm writing this book and I'm, it, you know, sometimes when you write a book, you are exposed to that thing that you're writing about to the point where like, I should write a book about brownies or write a book about steamed crabs or something like that, you know, and then I'm immersed in all that stuff that I love. But when you write a book, it's called hashtag fraud life, fraud life. And I'm studying all these things about people and the good and the bad and you know, and that's a fraudulent statement, really, if you break it down to what it is. Hey, how you doing? Great. How you doing? And then I'll sit and listen for an hour and a half to how somebody's doing. And they'll never know that I'm laying there watching the blood pressure monitor, getting closer to 200 over something or other, you know, and my face is going to explode and all that stuff. And you might say, well, you know, your heart's in a good place. Well, my heart is in a good place. I don't want to trouble anybody. I like to be the fixer, the helper, and the person that loves on people. I don't want to be the person that needs help. Yeah, but I got to be honest, right? And so a lot of times we see people in the public eye and, and um, you know, if you're down in Nashville, uh, you know, I guess on your website. Now, the website is laladeaton.com. Lala, L-A-L-A, Deaton, which is D-E-A-T-O-N.com. Go there. That's your social media link ups. That's all your stuff. She also has videos because your videos are pretty awesome. Um they're actually very awesome. My videos, not so much. Um, they're low budget, but you know. <clears throat> yeah, I know you've never asked for me to be on any of your videos. <laughs> I don't want to get in a fight we right live, here, like brother you and sister. Live so but far away, I just I uh, will come to Nashville I and do it for a video. That you'll just I know come to Nashville in a heartbeat. You know I'll come there, girl. <laughs> My good friend, uh, I've known him since he was an hour old. Held him at an hour and a half. Mark Campanella, he lives down there, and uh, love that boy. And uh, why well, is it? Young, he's a man now. I mean, you know, but I'll still call him a boy. I love him. So, but anyway, I, I, the, the point I'm trying to get at is when we go through life, we put up gates. I used to say walls, but it's not really walls anymore because it's, it's gates now, you know, and you put up a gate and you, just so you can move it and you can kind of scoot through real quick, look around, make sure nobody's out there to see your suffering. And you go, but then there's another type of person, the opposite type of person where they don't even have a gate and you wish they buy a gate. You buy them a gate because they're all the time, especially on social media, you know, uh, and it, what do they call it? Vague book. Hashtag vague book. Uh, what's that girl's name I listened to with the face? Uh, Heather. Heather Lane. Y'all, Heather Lane. You ever watch Heather Lane videos? No. That girl is crazy. She's from the South, which that tells half the story. How does she get it's a filter. Oh, my goodness. This Heather Land is so funny. Heatherland.com, I think, or some kind of thing. Well, anyway, she does these little one-minute deals, and it's called I'm Not Going to Do It or something like that, right? Yeah, I, ain't. I ain't doing it. And But the other day, she talked about hashtag vague book. Vague book. You know people get on Facebook, and they're like, that's it. I've had it. And they don't say what it's about. No, and then they get 27 <laughs> comments. What's wrong, baby? I'm praying for you. Call me. Uh, I instant messaged you. You didn't blah, blah, blah. Are you okay? And then 50 messages pile up and you're like, uh, hello, are you okay? And she's out dancing. She's the one out dancing. What she was upset about is she couldn't find her high heel shoes. She found her three inch heels, but she didn't find her six inch heels. And she was upset about that because those are her dancing shoes. You find out later on, ain't no big deal. But then you also find people who are always in that mode, right? They're always in that mode. Hey, Steve, welcome, brother. They're always in that mode, and they never can get out of that mode. And they're, str they're on the struggle bus all the time. But a lot of those people, they're on the struggle bus because they won't get out of the driver's seat of the struggle bus. And I think the bus driver of the struggle bus doesn't like people sitting on his lap. He might like you sitting on his lap better than he likes me sitting on his lap. But I'm not trying to get on somebody's lap and drive the struggle bus. But it's people who believe in Christ and people who have faith in God we are the worst. We're the worst at sharing each other's burdens, honestly. I don't mean honestly. I mean, honestly, we are the worst and sharing each other's burdens, honestly. Some people, you know, go way overboard and some people, you know, don't tell you anything. I'm one of the ones don't tell you anything, right? I have a, I have a little small group of people that I'll tell stuff to, but generally speaking, you know, if I die, it'll be somebody I'll read about in the paper like, well, I was just talking to him. He's fine. He said he was great even. Did he get hit by the struggle bus? Right? Because I couldn't die in natural causes. Got to be getting hit by something because I was so good before. Well, which leads me to this. 
and we talked about this uh, briefly at the beginning. People, um, what, is, what is it? What did we count? Three people in this room have lost their mothers. You lost your mom. You lost your mom. Who else? You lost your mom. In a month and a half? Three months? I mean, that's just unbelievable. And so we look at that, and there's all different ages, range of ages, you know. We look at that, and, you know, your mom, it's your mom, you know. That's your mom. You don't replace mom. You know, that's that's a hard thing. My mom is 87 years old and a wonderful, amazing lady, and I praise God every day that she's alive. I'll be seeing her on Tuesday, and I'm looking forward to it. Real exciting. Then I'm going to see her again on Thursday. Let me ask you this, not to break the serious subject, but um, <clears throat> how do you all feel about stuff is it stuffing or dressing what's it called stuffing. how many dressing do we have somebody raise their hand hold up for real stuffing and dressing is different well, let me just put my hand down show them ignorance now let me ask you all this stuffing y'all put gravy gravy on stuffing right you put gravy on stuffing i put gravy on everything seriously i put it on my green beans if there's green beans i put it on everything i don't care Oh, that's right. Angie does not like gravy. I do remember that. So I don't know about y'all out there. Um, okay, Craig, it'll, okay, good, good, good. We caught up. Um, so I really like stuffing. But you know what I think about? Now, I know you thought I went off on some tangent. I didn't, believe it or not. Um, you know what makes me? There's, there's, If somebody can get this message to my mother, don't say it's for me. But I love, no, seriously, don't say it's for me. I love her coleslaw and doesn't she make me a special container that gets hidden in the uh refrigerator right and it says on it sean <laughs> right and it's big old container i usually wait the whole thing that night when i get home you do not put gravy on coleslaw i will put gravy on oh, coleslaw I no i will oh. i'll put no here's what i do now i don't want to get in trouble here i will put it strategically close to my gravy so that incidental contact is made <laughs> you know it's not gross if it's incidental but I will eat it just by itself right out of the container. I will do it. Trust me. It happens. And so uh, I'm hoping that mom will make coleslaw. Now, mom's not doing so great. So she, she probably won't do coleslaw. And that's okay. I just want to see her. It don't matter. Um, but you know what? Stuffing I think of? Mom. My mom made the best stuffing. I loved it. It was the perfect consistency. It was moist. And I put gravy all up in it. And, you know, I got a lot of stuffing when I was a little kid. I really liked it. And I don't care that it's not good for you. It don't matter to me. But that made me think of mom. And um, I know a lot of people that there's a touchstone. I talk about this in my Living Through Grief on Purpose seminar. There are, there's always something that will make you think of mom. Mm -hmm. A smell. How many of you have a, excuse me. How many of you have a smell? Whew, I got sneezed, but I can't do it. What do you do when, when I sneeze? <laughs> excuse me. All right, so what are some touchstones for y'all? Be honest. Well, when I get a beating, I think of mom. Somebody beats on me, I think of mom. She was mean to me. Maybe. We'll share those later when we're not live, but maybe we'll start with Lala. What What do you think? Um, I definitely have some touchstones. Um, one would be uh, my mom was uh, the church organist at every church we were ever a member of growing up so songs um i heard some of her songs some of her arrangements and certain arrangements they of, played she's being you know memorialized big old christmas tree behind her she would have loved that uh i mean when i say big old christmas tree i'm not meaning like a christmas tree i'm meaning it go to my facebook and you'll see pictures of it from last saturday living Christmas tree. People mm -hmm. climb all up in this yeah. thing, goes all the way to the ceiling in this beautiful church, mm -hmm. and they sing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just amazing. So beautiful. But then the piano and the organ are playing your mother's arrangement. Yeah. How that must have felt for you. It was unreal. It was very emotional for yeah. me. Yeah, sure. You know, these, these were arrangements that she had been playing over the years for, you know, 50 50 years or more I'm sure but um, but there's certain things that um, you know that you you associate with 
with a person, certain yeah. feelings that you associate with those things and that person, and mm-hmm. um, and that music that she loved and played. Yeah, she made me love that music too. Hmm. You know, so that was a big one for me. Um, and you guys and, know Lala is a professional musician. She's a Nashville recording artist, and and a, t- what's the name of your Christmas album again? It's called Picture Perfect Christmas. Picture Perfect Christmas. I have it. Right in my little CD player, uh, right by my computer. I love listening to it. And I'm going to confess, I listen to it when it's not Christmas. Oh, well, in fact, awesome. I listen to it a lot when it's not Christmas, mostly when it's not Christmas. Now, um, we talked about touchstones, and we talked about, for me, I don't know about y'all, I've got a huge nose. So smells, it's a very effective nose. Smells for me are very, yeah. they, they remind me of things. I mean, going all the way back to when I was in boot camp. In, in Florida, you know, I used to love it when I get sent out somewhere in the middle of the night, you know, they'd send you somewhere to do this thing because there was this weird smell that I'd never smelled anywhere before. It was something natural. Uh, now, I was just a kid who never got on a plane before uh, I got to boot camp. I'd never been on a plane. What do I know from Florida? I hadn't been there. And so I smelled these smells and I remember it's and, and I never did smell it before. And I remember probably 15 years later, I was in another country. You know, another whole other country, and I wasn't supposed to be, I was supposed to be, not 15 years, it couldn't have been 15 years, but it was a bunch of years later, and I smelled this smell, and I'm supposed to be focusing on this other thing to try not to get dead, and, uh, but I smelled this smell. I was like, for a minute, I was like, what is that? Oh, that smells like, you know what that smells like? That smells like, when I was in boot camp, that smell I used to like in the middle of the night when they'd send me for something. Oh, man, I really like that. Never smelled it any time before that or since. That's a touchstone. That's a thing that your olfactory sense transports you back to this place, this time, this feeling. A lot of guys, they didn't like boot camp. I loved boot camp. I loved all my military training. Loved it all. It was fun for me. I really thought it was the coolest, funnest thing. But you know what? I thought of this at your mom's funeral. The the lady sitting behind me is one of your friends. I won't say her name. Mm -hmm. She must have had on a perfume that my, I'll try not to get choked up because I got choked up when I reached out and shook her hand. I smelled that and it got me. It just kind of got me real quick. Uh, my Aunt Mary Lee. My Aunt Mary Lee and Uncle Charles. Ugh, love, 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 love those people. Uncle Charles to me was just a hero. He was just a hero. Well, Aunt Mary Lee, she wore a specific kind of perfume. And this lady's perfume smelled just like Aunt Mary Lee's perfume. And it got me for a second. I hadn't thought about Aunt Mary Lee and Uncle Charles for a while. Ooh, and it just kind of, you know, ever get like that? You get like, something take over you? Am I the only one? Somebody raise a hand. No. How about an amen, bow your head, something like that? So we can hear, the audience can't hear you on amen. the radio. Amen. There we go. Amen. We'll put turn Pentecostal up in here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so those types of things. And what do we have coming up, right? We have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is is Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know how many days Thursday is away from today. I have a brain injury, but my son says four. He would not lie to me, not on the radio. Everywhere else probably so. <laughs> but so Thanksgiving is coming up, right? My dad is gone. Uh, my dad really, he never let you know that he loved Thanksgiving because he was kind of gruff, but he did. He loved Thanksgiving. He loved all the kids and grandkids to be home. And everything and all the food and, you know, just getting together. And I bet I bet that's going to be hard for you. Yeah. Um, and for many people out there listening all across the all across the country and all around the world. By the way, the folks in. Do you all remember me telling you about the book group in Belgium? Out of that book group in Belgium, there were 13. Six have come to Christ. Wow. Lady sent me a message. Awesome. I think it's a lady. It's I think it's a ladies group. It, it's a weird not weird, but it's a different sort of name. I got to look up the name and see which it is. But whoever that person, and if you're listening now, I'm sorry, I'm masking, you know, the whole story. But the point is, is six people have, have come to Christ in that group of 13. 13 atheists, they didn't believe in God. And somehow or another, they got a hold of my book. Who in the world knows? Probably the only 13 books that sold. I don't know. But um, 13 ladies in Belgium, you know. And uh, so that's a pretty cool thing. But let me let me just say this. There are a lot of people out there now who and I don't know. Can I talk you into playing your mom's song? The, I want to I want to have her play this first because this song, y'all, if you don't have tissues, you better get them. 
she I was good for the whole service because it was really I got to commend you. It was a really upbeat service. It was it was lovely. It was beautiful. The, it was started off cold. The, the day was really chilly and everything. But the graveside service was beautiful and sunny. There were people jumping out of airplanes right nearby, which, you know, I love. I wanted to get up in there. And, part of the service? Yeah. I don't know. Lala, she's <laughs> highfalutin. She may have arranged that. I don't know. Yeah. But but uh, it, it made me think, oh, man, how much I wish I was jumping out of that airplane. But the weather turned nice for the time, and the sun came out. It was beautiful. And then, you guys know I am about birds. A hawk was circling around the whole time during the service really? at the graveside. A hawk, a beautiful, beautiful hawk. And I'm thinking to myself, my camera's in the car. I wonder, and I was a pallbearer. I was privileged. Thank you for that privilege. How, what a Thank privilege you. to carry your mom, her final. The Lord carried her from there to, to heaven, but I got to carry her to the, to the grave. And... Um, so I mess around and talk and get myself emotional. But there was a beautiful hawk circling, 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 circling. I thought to myself, I wonder if anybody will notice if I run back to my truck and get my camera with my long lens. I'd love to take a picture of that, but I didn't do it. I'm bad, but not that bad. Um, but I thought to myself, man, oh, man, you know, what a poignant moment. What a poignant moment. So many, so many powerful things all happening at one time. Well, when you sang that song... Now, what's the title of it? It's, it's uh, You Gotta Love... Gotta Love Mama. Gotta Love Mama. And I won't spoil the line, but when she said that line, I was fine until she said that line. And then that messed me up. So, why don't you go ahead and sing this. This is called You Gotta Love Mama. And this is La La Deaton, La La Deaton music. Um, just give a listen and, and, and share this with your friends. I grew to know 
now y'all see why that song. Whew. Um, gotta love mom if you're gonna love me. You gotta love mom if you're gonna love me. And you know what something is? You, you guys know I'm real close to my mom, and uh, I adore her. I admire her so much. Uh, she is an amazing person, and your mom and my mom, my same mom. age, 80, 87 exactly. years old. And, you know, mom's got a lot of struggles, a lot of health struggles, and it's always, you know, that phone rings, you're always nervous, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure that phone call, you'll never forget it. Uh, and uh, I have to say that that song uh, reminded me, you know, back when I first started dating, my benchmark was if, if the girl didn't love my mom, then I didn't have much use for her, something wrong with her, you know. Uh, and honestly, if my mom didn't like the girl, there was something wrong with her. And she'd never say that, but you get it. You know, you know, moms can get that message across. So, yep. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it just reminded me of that. And so, thank you for doing that, by the way. Where can they hear that? Where can they buy that? Is there some place they can buy it? Um, not right now. But there will be soon. I am. I do have a demo of that. It's called a work tape okay. of that song. Um, and if, if any of you really want a copy of that work tape, I would be happy to, to give it to you, to send it to you um, via email. Um, other than that, I, I'm i going to go ahead and record it because I've had a oh, lot of people that, yeah, that, that one's awesome. want to have it. So um, so I'll, I'll get that done in 2018 and I'll have it available for sale. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So your so your mom and you are so musical um and and I say are on purpose. Some would say, "Well, wait a second, she's gone." But really this I really believe this and and you can think I'm crazy if you want. Many people do. Uh and you may be right. I don't know. <laughs> Probably you're right. But I believe that especially people of faith they don't really leave us. Their physical, their physical manifestation leaves us. But their spirit and who they are is part of us. You know, yes, it's part of our DNA. Yes, it's part of that person is part of our, our life experience. That person is part of. But when we're people of faith, especially, you know, who here remembers who led me to the Lord? My mother, five years old, winter in the kitchen, sitting at the table, five years old. And my mom led me to Lord. Most important decision you can ever make in your life. There is no more important decision, I'm telling you right now, than to place your faith in Christ. And how powerful it was that my mom, you know, my mom did that. But I wonder if there is a song that your mom really loved that you did. I know she loved all of them. She was probably like, oh, I love that one. Oh, I love that one. Oh, I love that one. She's such an encourager. When you said that at your... uh, because she listened to something that I did one time. Or I think she read the book or something. And she was so sweet. She was like, oh, I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It was so good. And I like how you said Because I thought at first she was just shining me on, being nice. But she quoted a, a part of it. And I was like, oh, what? Can read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, but she, was, she struck me very much as an encourager, a lifter. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder if there was a song that of, that you do that... She just really seemed always, whenever you play this, you oh, I like that one. I really like that one. Is there one like that? Well, she loved, she loved everything that I did. So, yeah. um, she was, it she, was, it's, it's hard to really hone in on one. Um, one of the songs that, um, she really loved on my Christmas album was the one I'm going to do tonight. And the irony of, of it is I, my, the songs that are on my Christmas album are, um, most for the most part, very jazzy and very difficult to play on guitar. I can't play them on guitar, but there is this one song um, that's uh, more along the line of a classical feel, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, my mom loved it um, because the it it it, it was. Um, more spiritually themed. I have a couple spiritual songs on the Christmas album. And now she was a great person of faith. Great person. Of unbelievable faith. the faith that she had. Unbelievable woman. Yeah. Faith. Um, you could see she, that ooze out of her. My goodness. Yeah. She she lived, breathed, and slept Jesus Christ. Ugh. And um, I mean, she it was evident in every aspect of her life. Yeah. And um, um, but this song I I learned. 
so I could play it tonight. So I've never actually played this, wow. um, this one particular Christmas song on the album. But I thought um, since Christmas is, is coming upon us, and it was one of my mom's um, favorite songs on the album, probably her favorite, um, I thought I would learn it and play it in honor of her. Awesome. Well, have at it, girl. You want me to do it now? Yeah, why not? All right. I'm probably going to mess this up. <laughs> it's okay. No. We won't know. You might know, but that's all right. Are there any Simon Cowles in the room? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, no pressure, though. Music teacher, got a bunch of prodigies uh, that he's taught. Oh, uh, great. Professional musician. Also? Okay, good. <laughs> Um, well, this song, um, this song is actually uh, the what we call the hook of this song, which is what we built um, all the rest of the song around in the lyrics. What we pointed to um, is actually a common nursery rhyme that we took and gave a different meaning to because it just made sense. So this is called "Mary Had a Little Lamb." <laughs> Weary travelers pace of a mule, young virgin with child a prophecy.
That was really nice. Thank you. Well, you done good because you faked me right out. <laughs> <laughs> I messed up a couple of that. That's all. Yeah, see that? Keep going. Keep going. Act like you act like just everything's fine. So, um, and I like that song because it takes little old and little new. Mary had a little lamb, and then you don't really realize. Uh, Gosh, the story, the story in this song is powerful. The lamb, the lamb of God. For the, you know, because of the lamb that was slain, we are free and redeemed. How many walk around carrying uh, stuff that they shouldn't carry anymore? Mm -hmm. You know, burdens, hurts, habits, hang up stuff. Just, we get jacked up in life. It's, it's a contact. Life's a contact event, isn't it? It's a contact sport. And you, you get, you get hurting and stuff happens, you know, uh, stuff with, with families, but, but nobody can hurt you like family, right? Right? Come on, shake your head. Nobody can hurt like family, and uh, the people that are closest to us have. We allow them in, and but sometimes you know nobody can fix you like family. And I, the reason I brought that up is because I want to say you know coming into the holidays, this is a tough time, right? We just got back, uh, Angie and Sean and, and Colleen and I just got back from. Uh, Tucson, Arizona, where it was very hard for any of us to get on the plane. Uh, we've left some dear friends there. Boy, I'll tell you what, some wonderful people. My goodness, some good folk. Uh, right? No, I know, right? You didn't want to leave that place. And uh, But but we were doing a, 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 a grief workshop for Gold Star Families. You know what a Gold Star Family is? Mm -mm. Well, Gold Star Family, you ever see in a window somebody's got a blue star? Mm -hmm. little mini flag, little banner with a blue star. That means they've got a soldier deployed. Someone they love is deployed. But if it's a gold star, they're not coming home except under a flag. Mm -hmm. And so these dear people, you know, they're hurting so bad. But at the holidays, oh, my lands, folks, their soldier... I know somebody right now, dear person I talk to a lot, that she has, uh, six years ago, her soldier, her boy, she got a call right before Christmas, and he was supposed to be home. Uh, she said it was it was 10 days after Christmas he was supposed to be home, and he was killed right before Christmas, uh, but she didn't get the notification until Christmas morning, oh and... They debated, the, the uh, notification officers debated. They said, gosh, you know, here and ever after Christmas for her. And uh, she, in retrospect, though, she said, I'm glad that they did because um, she's a very kind lady. And, and she said, after she kind of collected herself, she said, I know this was very difficult. And I'm so sorry that you had to be away from your family on Christmas to do this because they both flew there. They were from his unit. Uh, and they flew there. They wanted to make the notification themselves. So that's a gold star family. When you see a gold, uh, if you see an emblem on a car or in somebody's window, that's a gold star family. And and um, this group, you know, uh, they talk about events, big events in, in their lives, you know, uh, and how it just kind of brings them up. Oh, I remember birthdays with so-and-so was very special. Uh, one's birthday uh, is today, I think. Another one is the 28th, I think the 28th or 26th. Um, in this, just this one group, there's like four or five birthdays of their soldiers. Really close. And those are tough times. But you know what's interesting? I just think this is a fabulous thing. We have our family, and, and you're so fortunate to have a, an amazing, You had your father was an amazing man, had polio. But listen, talking to him, you wouldn't have known it. Mm -mm. You wouldn't have known it. If you talked to that man on the phone, you wouldn't have known it. Uh, really smart guy, too. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, and your mom, you know, I'm sure she had her struggles, right? It, you know, it, it's, 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 we're all on the struggle bus sometimes. And, but the thing is, there's a lot of people that didn't have that experience, didn't have an amazing mom and, and dad. And, and, uh, it is amazing and cool how a group like this, now, this is a group being shared around the world, but, a group like this. I'm telling you, when I invite people to come to this, I never, I'd be all over the country talking about this. And people will always ask me, is the Kehala really your favorite group to speak to? And I always say, yeah, I love, I love these people. They're my family. And that's a powerful thing. That's a really, really sweet and amazing thing. They're not your blood kin, but you might could call them family, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. You might could call them brother and sister. 
uh, you know, depending on who they are, you come on in, come on in. You you feel free to come on in. Uh, you know, you might could uh, you might could call a lot of different people, family, and and uh, they don't necessarily have to have your last name. Listen, we buried my my friend since kindergarten, Eric, uh, in July. You know, he had just had his birthday, and I tell you what, we've been friends since kindergarten. And he was like a brother. He used to tell the nurses, he said, this is my brother. And the one nurse looked at us like she didn't think it was funny. Um, <laughs> and so he thought to help the, ease some of the tension. So she, so, so she's kind of looking funny at me and looking at him, and she wasn't laughing. And, he, and uh, he said, well, really and truly, he's more black than me, looking at me, you know. And uh, he's, the, he's the blackest white dude I've ever known. And... But you know, uh, and you can testify to this, I had trouble grieving. Mm -hmm. I did, didn't I? Because I lost Morty, I lost him. Uh, who else did I lose? Like a bunch of people and just a, you know, really major Morty's wife, Morty's wife shortly after that, you know. Uh, she, she said, I won't be here long after Morty's gone. No point in staying. You know, she always said, if they give us a casket big enough, which they were tiny, I'll just crawl in. It'll be fine. You bury us. It'll be fine. And um, they were both buried in Israel within 24 hours of their death. They were born in Israel or are buried in Israel like they always wanted. And uh, so anyway, uh, they weren't my they weren't my kin. But boy, they were like my kin. You know, uh, how many of you have somebody in your life like that, that they're not they're not kin like blood kin. Whole Nashville family. Right. Your whole Nashville family. And, oh, gosh. And, uh, you know, and I imagine, you and I have talked about this before, and one of these days I'm going to come down there. I can't hang with you young folks, so I, I, you have to pace me. We're the same me. age, stop. No, we're not the same age. How old do you think I am? I think we're the same age. We're not the same age. Whisper to me. <laughs> you are a liar. We've talked about I this. I messed around and told everybody you're like 15, 20 years younger than me. That ain't right. Oh, no, man. Um, <laughs> You're wrong. I'm supposed to look. I'm supposed to look like she looks. Not exactly, completely. But, but we've talked about uh, how many musicians. I was just talking about this. I talked about you, to somebody the other day about how many amazing. And I guess you could really uh, testify to this too, because so many that you've taught are now these world famous people. Um, but um, how on any given night you can walk through Nashville and walk into a dive bar, and hear some of the best talent you've ever heard in your life mm -hmm. um and i remember one time i'll tell this quick story and maybe you could play another song if you want um i lived in memphis uh for some time and just outside of memphis and i went into memphis because i loved the blues and my idol back then was bb king right i mean that's bb king i mean he was the man mm -hmm. and so uh i was thinking to myself now i have little conversations with myself they're not out loud unless I have a brain injury, which now I have a brain injury. So this could be a conversation I'm having with myself that's just out loud. Y'all are hearing it. Here's the deal. I'm on my way to Memphis. Actually, I'm, I'm, for radio audience, I'm making the, the symbol of driving, you know, steering wheel moving back and forth. But actually, I was on a motorcycle. So you don't want this when you're on a motorcycle. So I'm on a motorcycle, and I had this whole conversation. How would it be if I bumped into B.B. King? Oh, man, I get down there, and if I saw him walking down the street... I, I would go, the thrill has gone, you know, because he would never, nobody would ever do that, right? That was, you know, I'm singing all this stuff. Oh, what would I sing him that I could really bust out? And he would be like, oh, I'm impressed. I'm going to take you with me. See if they can let you out of the military, right? I'll tell you, I had a whole conversation. Well, I get down in there and I go in this club in Memphis and I'm sitting there and there's, there's like a little bitty table, which you could see. I was close enough. Like I was literally the first row where this table was, uh, and I'm tall enough where I could see that there had must have been a thousand drinks. No coaster. Mom and wasn't in the club that night. Uh, no coaster was put on this little bitty table. I mean, I know that's a weird thing for me to think of, but I know my mom would be mad. You better put a coaster on that, boy. Um, but, but I thought, man, how many musicians have played here? Right? And I get my drink, which was this weird wheat beer drink. I was young and never had any kind of wheat beer. I didn't know what a wheat beer was. Or they had this wheat beer thing, and I said, all right, I'll try it. Uh, it was nasty. I didn't like it at all. But the point of this is the the, the lady comes up behind me, um, and she, you know, she kind of taps me because I was young and 
really in good shape. You know, I think she wanted to kind of test me a little bit. I don't want to say she had a little thing for me, but I felt something there. She was maybe, you know, maybe wanting to see. I'm just saying, young sailor, looking good, you know, trim, 5.9% body fat. I don't want to just throw that out there. So I'm thinking maybe she just wanted to, you know, just see what was there, you know. And so so she taps me on the shoulder and says, uh, here's your drink. You know, big old thick southern Memphis accent. Here's your drink. I said, thank you. Turned around. I was a little smitten. I'm not going to lie. I turned right back around. And who was sitting in that chair? I thought, B.B. King, King, y'all. B.B. King. Shut up. Look, here's what I did. I didn't wear glasses. I didn't wear glasses. And I had my helmet on the table because I didn't ever put my helmet on the floor because that's gross. Uh, I did like this. Radio audience, I'm sorry you can't see this. If you'd have come, you'd have gotten a good meal and you'd gotten to see this, this would be worth it twice the price. I did like this. I literally did this. I kid you not. I went, you know, cartoon thing? Yeah. This deal where you rub your eyes. <laughs> Am I really seeing this? And I did like this. I looked back and she goes, mm-hmm, baby, that's Mr. King. <laughs> and I, I said, I thought I was, I thought I was, she says, seeing things. I said, yes, ma'am. She says, you ain't. He, he comes in here whenever he wants to. I said, is he going to sing and play music? She goes, why do you think he has that guitar, honey? I thought, well, I sound stupid, but I don't care because B.B. King's right up there. Then I thought to myself, now, Seth, that's what I called me when I was talking to me. I said, Seth, how do you think Mr. King would feel about me walking up to him and shaking his hand and saying, Mr. King, you know I have every album, I mean tape, you ever did. Right back there at the barracks, I got it all lined up. They're stacked up. B.B. King, B.B. King, B.B. King, B.B. King, B.B. King all the time. I run to your music. Don't you even know? And then I was, I was thinking about busting out. The thrill is gone, you know, just let him hear it. But I changed my mind. I was a little nervous at the time. You might have noticed that. So all of a sudden, Lucille starts to strum up a little bit. And he started tearing it up right from the start. Not even a warm up. And then after he finished playing a few licks, I guess that was his warm up. I guess you all musicians do that. He got his fingers loose. He laughed. He had that big old laugh, you know. (laughs) How y'all tonight? And uh, I'll never forget what he said next. He said it again. How y'all tonight? Didn't nobody say anything. I guess everybody else was like me. They were like, that's B.B. King. Everybody was busy talking about that's B.B. King. And you know what he said next? He said, now y'all, we're family. We're family. We're going to have family time. Aren't we? Y'all in? I was like, I raised my hand straight up. I was like, I'm in. I'm in. Whatever you want, Mr. King. Whatever you want. I'll get you drinks all night long if you want. And, uh, but he said, we're all family. For that night, we were all family. Have you ever been in a situation where, and, and we're talking specifically about shared sorrow. But you know, have there ever been links that were created between you and somebody else, Joy? Mm-hmm. I was at a concert. Now, let me just say, I wasn't supposed to be at this concert. Uh, it was when I was a kid. I technically wasn't supposed to be out of the country. It was out of the country. I was supposed to be somewhere else, spending the night somewhere else, nearby. But actually, we were in another country, but that's not important. And don't tell my mom what is important is that I was watching pink Floyd standing there watching pink Floyd. Right. And I remember turning to my left and just being so amazed. That was my favorite band at the time. Oh my gosh. Comfortably numb. Come on. Uh, And I remember turning and I didn't know these people over here to my left at all. It was so dark in there most of the time. Uh, that you couldn't really see anybody. You hoped, you know, they weren't picking your pocket or anything. So I've turned and looked, nothing against Pink Floyd fans because you haven't picked my pocket yet. Uh, so, but I remember turning and looking and I remember this guy and this girl who were obviously together. Uh, they turned at the same time to look at me and went, I know, you know, like, I know, can you believe this? Because they literally were better live than they were on the, uh, on the on the radio or on records. We listened to records back then. You listen to records? Mm-hmm. You just got some of your mom's records in your, mm-hmm. right? How a cool lot. is that? Yeah. You'd be jam up a call up Lala down Speaking in Nashville. Of touchstones. Right? Every time you touch them. Mm-hmm. That's something different, right? We, we listen to them. Hey, we miss out on that, don't we? Because all you do on your phone now, right? You got MP3s. Boop. Press a button. Like, you know what? Let me just say this. I played records last week. You played records last week? Yes, sir. You Rock it up. I, I went and bought a, a, an old, really old record player. Um, from an antique shop. Oh, cool was that? And for, so I could play my... And this was, you know, before I knew my mom yeah. was 
going to pass away. And so now you're going to take those records now home, your mama's, home. take them home and play them. Oh, I had to call you up. If you're like, <laughs> I know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I hear music in the background. All right. Yeah. So let me just say this real quick. You can't, um, you're not supposed to say that out loud. Did I say that out loud? You did say it out loud. What'd she say? Here? I'm not going to repeat it. She wasn't supposed to say it in the first place. So while she's gone, let me just say this. You, we, you can't even half hang up a phone. You know how you hang up on people? You can't do it anymore. You can't slam anything down. <laughs> right? But what do we still do? We still do this symbol, right? Where we hold the pinky out. That's where you talk. And then your thumb is your earpiece. And then you do that. You can't do it anymore. All you can do now is tap. That's not bold. That's not boss. Nothing. You don't get anything. And if you throw your phone, it costs you $1,000. Right? Uh, I, I will, let me... Yeah, right, right. Uh, my mom still has the phone I grew up with. Really? For real. You'll sprain a finger trying to dial it. Seriously. Go ahead and tie it. Does it still work? Yeah, it works. <laughs> right? You guys ever hear that? Anybody out there ever have? You, some of y'all. Oh, look here. Craig from upstate New York. Why do you think I named my motorcycle Lucille? Mr. King opened for the Rolling Stones in 1969 in Philadelphia. Met him that night. Could care less about the Stones. Too crazy. You know, I've got to admit this. I mean, this is a church thing. I never was into the Stones. Is that bad? Do you all think that's bad? It depends on who you admit that in front of. She said that loud. She didn't like Pink Floyd. <laughs> right? I don't remember asking people if they like Pink Floyd. We're talking about the Stones. If you like the Rolling Stones. Well, the point is the microphone is right here. Uh, so, so I didn't care for the Rolling Stones, to be very honest with you. I really didn't. And I still kind of don't. There are some of their songs that weren't, didn't get regular airplay that I thought, wow, I really like that song. Why didn't I ever hear it? And it's because it didn't get regular airplay. The only way you'd know that song is if you, if you listen to the record, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't know. What do I know? Um, so anyway, while you were gone to an undisclosed location, um, <laughs> this, is, this is an interesting thing. We talk about... And I think we don't converse like we used to. Uh, I'm 52. I'm pretty young. But folks don't converse like we used to. You ever get together with folks and just sit around and, and you know, uh, have drinks and eat food and... Uh, play cards. And do what? Play cards. Play cards. Play yes. board games. Board games. Right? They do at their house. That's they do a game. lot. Uh, and just sit around and chat. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Sean and Angie, that book club. You mentioned your book club you used to have. Uh, and just gathering. And I think we've been to some gatherings at your house where we had a meal and just sat around and worshiped, did worship music. And it was fun. I mean, it's a lot of fun. But you know, people don't gather like that yeah. as much anymore. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's we're busy. I think we, I think if you're that busy where one night a a, a, a month maybe that you could maybe, um, you know, have a have a, a gathering, a get-together, and just sit around and talk about things and listen to music. Or and people don't even drop over anymore. Well, you know what? This is what I want to say. This is what I want to say. My mom, you know, I call my mom uh, whenever. She still lives in the house I grew up in. I But I call her, don't I? I call her and see how she's doing. I don't just pop in there. She's not a pop-in. That's not her thing. You think, well, you're her son. I'm the fifth son. I'm the, fi- I'm the youngest. She was like... Oh, whatever, <laughs> you know, but, uh, no, I was easy. I was the easiest one. Trust me on that. Can you testify? I was by far the easiest one. No wonder I was a covert operative because I figured out how to not get caught. <laughs> My brothers, man, they, they didn't take some classes. I'm like, man, you need, you need to get you some classes. Bonfires in the woods, barbecues, summers, uh, winter, you know, he's in upstate New York. They already have feet of snow probably. Oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, people don't gather like that. And we lament, why don't we have the closeness that we used to have? Now, I made friends in Tucson. You can testify this, can't you? You can. And if they're listening, you all know who you are. I'll be friends with the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. We were together three days. <coughs> Not even three days. I'll be friends with those people the rest of my life. Powerful. Why is that? Because we connected over something. Um, we shared burdens and sorrows. We shared those tough times. There's, look, there's no tougher time. My mom told me, she said, my, my next oldest brother was 52 when he died. 
He was two years. I'm, I, it happened two years ago. And to bury him was the hardest thing she ever did in her life. And she's had some heartache, let me tell you. She said, burying your child is the worst. It's just the worst. Um, but you know, these people that we gather with, the Michael Strange Foundation, um, all of these Gold Star parents shared sorrow, shared grieving. But you know what we did? If you go to my Facebook, go back to whatever night that was uh, on there and watch the Facebook Live videos from that night. I'm telling you, it's probably the funnest time I've ever had. Oh, oh both of the people, it was uh, Two's Company, Tucson, Arizona, both in their 80s. I'm going to tell this story right quick. You haven't heard it. So I'm, I'm trying to take pictures and whatnot, and I put my camera down. I look up, and there's this saucy lady. She's one of Two's Company, you know. She's up there, and they're jamming. Straight up, serious musicians. But they're That's so, the name of the band? Two's Company. Two's Company. Two's Company. Two's company. There's only two, husband and wife. And they're in their 80s. Now I want you to understand. This was, these are two husband and wife in their 80s. You have to remember their age when you go to the Facebook and watch these videos. They were great. Look here. She wore costumes and she would put costume things on him for each song and all that. That was funny. But at a certain point, and you know how you see something you're not sure you saw? So you look again. Right? You might do this cartoon thing with your eyes. I looked over there and she's got a card up, three by five card that says, will work for sex. Oh. <laughs> right? So what do I do? I'm in the photography. I say, I got to capture this. Nobody will believe me. So I lean over and get my camera. As soon as I pull it up, she's looking at me and she goes, puts it down like that. This wry smile, you know, you know like, oh. And then I put my camera down. Boop, there it goes again. Oh my goodness, she was hilarious. But that shit, you know, we, we, there was a lot of tears shed, were there not? Yes, there were. That weekend. But I'm telling you, there was a lot of healing done too. Mm-hmm. Family. You don't have to be blood family to be family. Mm-hmm. You talked about your Nashville family. We have our Kehala family, right? We have all kinds of events that happen in our lives that we share together. Now you might say, well, I have my church family. Now, the book I wrote uh, before, Excellence Killed the Church, How Mediocrity is Destroying America, I talk about that, and I'm going to refer to some things I mentioned in that book in Fraud Life, um, right at that point now, where a lot of times church families aren't like they used to be. You know why? Because we've taken a part of the world and we've put it into the church. Instead of the church spreading its tentacles out into the world, the world has really kind of poisoned the church a little bit. Why? Because people are snippy, people are gossipy, uh, people don't trust people. Now, why don't people trust people? Because they got betrayed, they got burned. Man, there's no quicker way to ruin somebody's trust in another human being than to lie to them. Is there? If, if you know of one, somebody tell me. Because I don't know of a quicker way for a betrayal to lie to me and to betray me. It, it, breaks, it breaks me. It breaks my soul. So that happens in churches. People... Have that happen, and, it, and it's a shame. What happens when it happens between close friends? You ever have that? A close friend, maybe, that you were just super, super close to. I know we talked about that one thing. Uh, man, that's tough when a person betrays you and lies to you. It's, it's heartbreaking. So that's why churches all around the country today, maybe around the world, I don't know how it is in churches in other places, but in the United States, churches in a real, right, we've got these huge mega churches, and, and uh, if you're a mega church, I love to come to all size churches. Whatever. You can have a meal afterwards. It's fine with me. If you're near the coast and you have oysters or whatever, I'm fine with that. I'm good. <laughs> but the point is, is not how you're going to feed me. Is that You're welcome to invite me to come and speak, and I will. But here's the thing. I have been in churches. I'll just tell this story real quick, and then I'd like to hear another song or two or five. Um, <laughs> I've been in a, a church, uh, this one particular church. I'll say their name. Why not? Uh, Marysville, uh, Vineyard Church of Marysville. Steve Wood and Colleen Wood, the pastor. Steve Wood was the pastor, Colleen's his wife. I don't know where that man is now. I don't know where those people are now. It's a little tiny farmer type of church, little farm type of community. Stumbled in there. Uh, we were trying to fix up my little country house and had a renter in there that tow it all up and we were trying to fix it and, uh, and try to sell it. And we, we looked a sight. I'm telling you what, we looked a sight. And... It was snowing because it snows in September. 
this wasn't September, but it was, and that's how it is in Ohio. It snows every 10 minutes. And so, but not like upstate New York, Craig. Um, so it's really snowing bad. I mean, it's you, and it's two hours. Was it two hours? Yeah. Two hours back to where we had to go. And we're driving and we pass this liquor store. And then right there, there's this little church and there's all kind of people out there. Like all pouring into this place. And I think I said something about going to church. Saturday night, night, right? So you don't know who could be. You know what you're walking into, you know. Back then it was sketchy to have church on Saturday night. You didn't know, you know. Not like now. You could have church any night. So uh, we're on our way. I say, I want to go in there. And she was all like, "Mm -mm, we're nasty. I wasn't nasty. I always look good, you know. So, (laughs) you know, had on my tight jeans. No, I had on my working jeans. I don't wear tight jeans. I can't pull that one off, right? That's where you don't say amen. Right, that's my point. You didn't say amen, so I, I'm just being modest. So the point is... No, you're just asking the wrong person. Right? So the point is, is I said, no, come on, let's go on in there. And there's regular people going in. We pulled up, and this lady, well, what's going on in there? We asked her. She was in a minivan trying to unload her children, like minus four degrees, snow everywhere. And uh, she's like, oh, we're getting ready to have church. And I'm like, hmm, half church. And uh, you said it was a wedding, wedding. a wedding yeah. reception or something or some kind of thing. And she's, I said, see, it's church. And uh, I said, what kind of church is it? And she said, oh, it's a nice church. People, that wasn't the question I was asking. I was asking, you know, is it First Baptist, First Lutheran, uh, whatever kind of church? That's what I was aiming for is what, what are we getting into? And so, uh, but we went in there and I'm telling you what, y'all, the spirit was up in there. The spirit was up in that church. And from the first second we walked in, the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, was all over that place. And then this girl named Gina. Gina, this little skinny, little, tiny little bit thing, started singing with the praise band or worship band or whatever band they call it. And I'm telling you, you were somewhere else. You went somewhere ethereal. In that moment. And you didn't know you were going. But you knew you were there. We both started bawling. I mean, this is pre-brain injury. I mean, I cried drop a hat now. But back then, I didn't hardly cry for nothing. And the spirit was just all up on us. And it was really one of the most powerful worship experiences I've ever had in my life. And I said to myself, you know, if I ever, I wasn't even thinking about being a a preacher then, but if I ever have a church, I want it to be just like this. I want it to be just like this. Because those people are family. They invited us back. They said, come on back. Of course, it didn't hurt that they gave us cookies and whatnot after and tea and we had to make the drive home so she's slugging hot chocolate and it's snowing to beat the band i'm slugging coffee you know to make it home and uh, but they were so nice and everybody talked about hugging they were all about the hug they hugged us but it wasn't one of them silly little pat 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 you know it was a real hug it was real love being extended to you and you thought to yourself these are regular people let me just tell you this part and then i'd love for you to sing there's a fellow across the room this is what got me beautiful woman greeted us remember her Mm -hmm. beautiful she was stunning she looked like a picture you know and but she was i don't want to say she was plain beautiful but she was she didn't need any help is what i'm saying not like me makeup i gotta be in a makeup chair an hour and a half go on tv but she could go on tv right then and be beautiful stunning take your breath away and then i look over near her and there's this guy talking to her And he's grinning from ear to ear. She's smiling. She's greeting everybody. He's greeting everybody. And I look down. He comes over like he's going to shake my hand. I look down. And you know what he doesn't have? Hands or arms. He had these mechanical arms with the articulating hooks. Young man. Couldn't have... 20s maybe. Turned out they had a family. They were were a little family. They had children and everything. I tell you what got me. Gina was tearing it up, singing a worship. There wasn't a worship song; it was a hymn, actually. And everybody had their book. In my cynical head back then, I said, "Well, I bet he's not singing because you know he can't turn the pages." I did. I thought that. 
Not in a mean way. I didn't say it out loud. I'm saying it out loud now. If he's listening, sorry, but you you inspired me. So it all worked out. Um, he, I look over, and I mean across the little sanctuary deal. I look over, and there's this man, grinning from ear to ear, smiling and singing praises to God while holding a songbook. And he had his artificial hand. Mm, somebody. Had his artificial hand, his hook in the air, and his head turned to heaven, praising Jesus. And you could see the light hitting his face and the tears of gratitude pouring down his face. That's what the church is supposed to be. The country's not falling apart because of bad politicians. It's not falling apart because of bad policy. Oh, that's all bad. It's falling apart because you go into churches and people are more worried about stupid stuff than they are about being family, the family of God. That's tragic, isn't it? I say every church can, if you're listening anywhere around the world, maybe you're a pastor um, and you're listening or maybe you have influence in your church, make the change, start the change. It'll happen slow, but, but just stay at it and make it a family. Make your church a family. God bless you. Make it a family. That's the only thing that's going to change this country. I firmly believe that. If the church gets strong, granted, rises up, but they've got to be a family before you can rise together. That's a big problem we have. Anyway, what do you think you might play now? Um, well, actually, I'd love to play this, this uh, one song that I wrote with some friends of mine. Um, because it kind of ties into what you're talking about. Um, I think that when I look around these days... What is that thing? What? This? No, I know what the capo is. What's that little That's thing? That's a tuner. Do you know what I, I was always thinking on... I watch American Idol, don't hate. Um, on American Idol, I was thinking it was a little camera. Oh. <laughs> so you could see that would be the shot where you could see their fingers moving on the guitar. That's what I imagined. Now, I didn't really yeah. think that. I sort of thought that. I hope that no, was but that. No, you can get those little GoPros that connect to things. You can put that on there? It, I want to learn to play guitar just so you can see oh. my fingers on that. Yeah, you Not can that I can, that. Look, I can't even write. I can't write. So, post-brain injury. I could write before, though. What's this But called? anyway, so this song, um, I was getting together with some friends of mine to write. And, and as songwriters, we write about love all the time and love relationships and relationships gone bad and you know trying to get over relationships and what have you anybody got an amen on that one amen, hello right but we we don't write a lot about just the universal love of of god and each other and family like what you're talking about yeah. and i had had this we call it a hook in my hook book for a while and i brought this to the co-write um, with three friends of mine, and I said, y'all, let's write a song about love. I've got this hook called Try Love, and I don't want to write about, you know, man and a woman love or whatever. I want to write about, there's so much, there's so much, you know, hate going on around the world, and hate of this group and that group, and, you know, even hate of groups that are loving each other and because we don't like the way they're loving each other or who they're loving and what have you. And, you know, so let's, let's write about love in a different way. Not that no one's ever done this, but I wanted to do this. So anyway, this is called Try Love. Dark and lonely, twisted up, turned around, wondering if the only way to let them hear you in the dark is just to fight or try.
dark and lonely, twisted up, turned around, wondering if the only way to let them be you in the dark is just to fight for try love. Awesome. Really good. Love that. Love that. You know, that, that makes me think of, and it's funny that you had that song, because we didn't, I don't. I have no idea. The only song I requested was what? Gotta Love Mama. Yeah. Um, that's the only one. I said, you play what you want to play. And that's ironic that that was the next song, Try Love. We didn't even plan this. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I wanted to say, um, and, and maybe this is a question you guys can ask yourselves, to yourself, and maybe the folks listening around the world, you can ask yourself, and if you're listening with your family, um, Maybe this would spark a conversation, but, and I want to say this with all gentleness. I I don't, I'm not poking fun, but you know, uh, one of the craziest calls I ever went on as a police officer was on Thanksgiving. And early on I had to work, you know, all of the holidays, you know, when you're rookie officer, you got to work all the holidays. That's just how it works. It's only right. And, uh, so, you know, for a long time I was away in the Navy away all the time you know, post Navy away all the time and, and police officer away all the time. And I have to say this one particular Thanksgiving, it was snowy. Actually, it was a weird Thanksgiving. It was really snowy and very cold. And, uh, I remember getting a call to this house, domestic in progress. Uh, and you know, domestics are very volatile. You, you get to them, you got to really be careful. We traveled one vehicle, one to a vehicle, you know, one patrol car, one person had to go and handle most of the stuff. I mean, cause there was nobody else to come. And, uh, you know, slow moving anyway, the bad weather and all. It's a holiday, so it's your short staff. And I get there, boy, you can hear screaming and yelling, plates breaking, uh, the whole bit. And I was like, oh, Lord, what in the world? Am I going to have to lock somebody up on Thanksgiving? Or as we say in the South, Thanksgiving. Like you still say insurance, you say insurance. Anyway, I might should get back to the story. We say that too, might should and might could. Mm-hmm. Um, so I walk in. And there is an older black gentleman sitting there. There's little kids at the table. And I mean, there's food all over the walls. There's broken plates. There's dings in the walls. There's a picture, a very nice picture that had a tear in it. Looked like somebody threw a plate or some kind of heavy thing at it. And there was a bunch of screaming going on in the kitchen. Of course, you think in the kitchen, knives. You don't want to, you know, I don't want to get stuck. Um, And so... But I look at this man, this older older black man, and his hair was all gray. He wasn't smiling and he wasn't frowning. And uh, I walk over to him and I say, and he's still eating, by the way. He's not Mr. Beat. <laughs> I brought it in Mr. Beat. I kid you not, this is true. And so he's sitting there and he's having his, his meal. You know, I, and I don't know if it was, at that point in time, I didn't know if it was his house and they're acting a fool or it's their house and he's just there for the holiday. And I, I kind of lean in and I say, sir, I don't mean to interrupt your meal, but what's going on here? He says, oh, it's just a joke gone bad. Just a joke gone bad. I said, what do you mean a joke gone bad? He says, well, tell you how it went. This here's how it went. You see, my boy don't have no couth. And I ain't saying he learned it from me, but he didn't learn it from me. <laughs> The boy thought he'd be funny. And we all sitting down to dinner. Everything's there. And he talks about, hey, Pop. What, Daddy? You know how I know when dinner's done? No, son. How do you know when dinner's done? And he says, ha, when the smoke detector go off. <laughs> and that was it. The smoke detector go off, and she went off. And that was that. She'd heard all she heard. She had been cooking since 4 in the morning. And she had had all she could heard. And, you know, he didn't help at all with any of the cooking. And so then she lost it. And then when she lost it, he lost it. But this this man, who they call Pop, uh, Pop was unfazed by it. And I said, man, you're pretty calm. You're pretty calm. And he says, yeah, I don't see no reason to let good food go to waste. And, <laughs> and I said, is it good? Well, remember, I talked about stuffing. Did I talk about stuffing on the radio yes, or was it at yes, dinner? Yes. So... He says, go on and get you some of this stuffing. Now, I kid you not, I grew up in a coastal town. I'd never had oyster stuffing. Mm-hmm. Anybody here ever have oyster stuffing? Yeah. Oh, mm, mm. There's some green faces out there, and there's some like, mm-hmm, let me have some. 
He said, go ahead and get you some. And I'm thinking, well, he knows if it's safe or it isn't. So I figured, why not? He dipped me out a healthy portion. I want you to know, I had some of that oyster stuffing. And I said to myself, any woman that can cook this good deserves to be treated like a princess. <laughs> so I went in, I got up and went in the kitchen. I was righteously indignant in my police uniform on Thanksgiving. I walked in there and I looked at him and I said, what's your name? I'm not going to say what his name was, but we'll make up a name, Devin. And uh, I said, what's your name? I'm making up this name. His name wasn't this. Devin, Devin, what takes you treating a woman can cook like this, like this? He goes, all I did was crack a joke. I said, what'd you say? I wanted to see if he said the same thing that Pop said. He said, I didn't say nothing. I said, I knew then. I knew it was how Pop said. And then there were some profanities from from the princess who I was, whew, I hope she didn't kiss her mama with that mouth. And she was, boy, she knew some cussing. She was a good cusser. You ever you ever run across somebody who could cuss like oh, I live in poetry, Mexico. right? Could cuss like poetry. My best friend cussed like that, right? Songwriting. Cuss like poetry, you know? So, somebody wrote a song, you know? Ooh, let me write that down. You just cussed like that? I'm going to write that down. That'd be a good song, right? And so she cussed a blue streak, and I was like, ooh, my tender ears, you know? And uh, she was mad. She was hurt. Her feelings, what it was, was her feelings were hurt. And that's why. Because she had gotten up at four in the morning and gotten everything and started the way going. And she had been asking for help all morning long. And she was, she was, y'all didn't think there was a point to the story, but there is. She was just, she, she. She was fit to be tied. She was fit to be tied, y'all. And sometimes, you know, don't we, sometimes we get thinking about ourselves. We get in our own head. And we don't think about all the people in the orbit around us that are just working to make it happen. They're just working. I don't know how many of y'all out there and, and obviously around the world, the people have Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't know how many. I'm just going to. This is free. You didn't pay anything for this. This is, I mean, I wish I had a set of Ginsu knives. I give you these for free. Don't make Thanksgiving tough on the people doing the hard work. Don't do it. Don't do it. Now, I'm going to tell you, this story ended pretty well. I didn't have to lock anybody up. Uh, out of nowhere, she was cussing up a blue streak. And I had said, remember how this started with, his name wasn't Devin, but I'm saying Devin. Devin, I said, you know, what did, did you say? And then and then he was like, I ain't say nothing. And then, of course, then I heard, she did say what she said. And, you know, she stopped me in mid-counseling session. You know, I'm giving this big, I'm young, I'm count, I'm counsel them, you know, like I knew something. And uh, <laughs> she says, Hold up. Did you say you like my oyster dressing? I said, yes, ma'am. Your oyster dressing is the first and the best I have ever had. She goes, honey, I got some more in the stove. Well, sold right then and there. I said, hey, we can talk over dinner. And I went in. I went back in there and I sat down with that family. And I want you to know, we laughed so hard. But that's not the worst part. That's the best part. The worst part was what I didn't consider in my head was my uniform pants. My shirt was brown and I didn't hardly ever wear a jacket. I was was always hot, you know, Uh, but my pants, my uniform pants were gray with a gold stripe down them. You know, when food flies around the room, it ends up on chairs. I sat in cranberry sauce, (laughs) right? I didn't know it. I did not know it. I think I might have had long john pants on. And I get back to the patrol state or police station. And you know, you talk about family. Those folks were family. They fought like cats and dogs. Right? Didn't they? Throwing stuff, damage to painting. But then we all sat and we laughed and all was good. It was all good. Well, I was so stuffed. I was really full. I do remember that. And and then I ride all the way back in my police car and I get in there and I'm all set and ready to tell the story. I thought, man, I've only been on this job two or three years and I got a good story already. And uh, everybody's snickering, but not in front of me. I was a big guy, you know, I was a really big guy and really piped out and kind of scary. And, and, but then they would laugh behind me and I'm thinking, well, why are they, what, what are they laughing at? And so uh, finally I go up to my good buddy who was in the academy with me, we happened to get put on the same squad. I said, bro, what's all the laughing about? He goes, walk over here. And there was a mirror. And I, I walked over and I turned around. I I had a big butt then. I don't have a big butt now, but I had a big old butt then, you know, not fat. It was from lifting weights. And anyway, so the point is, it was big. I ain't going to lie. If you all see a picture, you'd be like, 
Yeah, he did have a big butt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, and I was 257 pounds in all muscle. So I turn around, do my little best little booty look in the mirror, and I got cranberry sauce all over my rear end, and it's all red and whatever color cranberry sauce is. And then I look, and there's all my supposed-to-be family, my thin blue line family over there laughing so hard, I thought they were going to spit milk out their nose or some kind of thing. So there's good family, and there's not as good family. But the point of it is, is like you talk about your Nashville family. And, and, you know, I'm sure you have fights with mm-hmm. them. You have arguments and stuff. Songwriters and singers and performers, musicians are passionate people. Mm-hmm. And so they're passionate about everything. All y'all are passionate about stuff too, you know. Y'all are passionate about stuff. There's some, who's Italian in the room? Go ahead, raise your hand. Don't lie. Trust me. You didn't, trust me. You didn't have to raise your hand. We knew. Um, the point is, is Italian families, right? They're big arguments. And then you laugh. And then you have a big argument, and then you laugh. It's not just Italian. There's other families who do that, too. Uh, I was going to tell an Irish joke, but I'm not going to do it because I'm part Irish. But, uh, do it. I'm part Irish, too. The, so the Irish joke is, yeah, Irish people do it, too, but they get drunk first. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, but, you know, the point of this is, is, I just want you to understand, I know people right now, I've talked to people this week, who are dreading the stress of Thanksgiving. They love having everybody together. They love having everybody. Everybody, they love their family. But you know what? It's stressful. Right? It's stressful. The person who does the cooking, it's stressful. I'm saying this. To cooks out there, ask for help. Don't mess around and be a martyr and talk about, I got to get all this done. I'm getting up two in the morning. And then be so tired come dinner time, you're just crabby. Don't do that. Ask for help. Get help. If your kids are old enough to help you, that that's great for them to learn. That's a wonderful thing. And it's memories. Mm-hmm. And by the way, don't forget to tell your family that you love them. Now, don't lie. If you don't love them, don't tell them that. Work on helping them to be better, helping you to be better, so you do end up loving them. But the point is, is if you love your family, tell your family, especially your children. Tell your family. Tell your friends. But here's the thing. Yeah, right? Husbands and wives are like, mm-mm, I ain't messing around with that. I'm trying. I'm not trying to lie. I'm, I'm just trying to open the leaf. <laughs> so, but don't make yourself crazy this Thanksgiving. Don't make yourself crazy. Um, get help. Ask for help. Even if <laughs> the, 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 the Italian in the room says, have a drink. That was her suggestion. Boston Market, well, whatever. They don't advertise. They don't advertise on my show, so I'm not going to say their name again. But the point is, but the point is, is have a friend, or or have somebody. Maybe if your kids are old enough to help you cook, or you have friends, they're all about the eating part. You know, have friends like that, right? Oh yeah. They come over with look. They come over with this four dollar or this what is it called? Two buck chuck. Two buck chuck. Two buck chuck wine. You know that somebody gave them that wine a hundred years ago. And it doesn't improve with age. And they're bringing it, look what I got you. And they put a bow on it like it's some festive thing. And they're right before dinner. And you know they don't help. And you know they're sitting there with their feet up and talking about after all the dishes are done, they hear the last dish go in the dish dryer thing. What do they call that thing? Dishwasher. Dishwasher. Uh, That goes in the dishwasher. (laughs) So it goes in the dishwasher. As soon as they hear that, they're like, you sure I can't help you in there? Right? And, And right, you're in the other room going, Mm, trust me, I don't need that kind of help. It's already finished. And, uh, you know, don't be that kind of guest. Help the person, but maybe call them maybe tomorrow or maybe tonight if it's not too late where you are. Call them tonight and just say, you know, hey, I was thinking about it. You've so graciously invited me for Thanksgiving. Is there some things I can do leading up to Thanksgiving that I can help you? And don't be too proud to accept their help or to be honest with somebody else. How are you doing, Sean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, be be honest with them. Tell the truth. But here's here now. This is, could be taken as offensive, but I don't mean as offensive. This is just something to think about. If you say to them, "Is there anything I can do to help you get ready for Thanksgiving?" Don't be too proud if they say, "Oh, I, there is something you could do, but I don't want to ask you to do that." No, no, no. You go ahead. You go ahead. I I, I want you to ask. I want to help you any way I can. 
man, my back is hurting. Uh, I can't run that sweeper. I can't Hoover. I have an uh, audience in um, in in uh, the UK, and they're always talking about Hoovering. Oh, I've got to run the Hoover. Mark <laughs> Sutherland right now is turning over. He's like, oh, that's a terrible British accent. Um, so, but, you know, maybe they want you to run the Hoover and, and maybe suggest it. Say, can I run the sweeper for you? Can I, uh, do you have enough dishes? Can I bring some dishes over? What, how about drinks? Can I bring drinks? How about I assign, you know, you assign me to do a certain thing like drinks or set the table or whatever. I can come down before and, you know, whatever. What time do you want me to? Be sincere about it. Take some of the pressure off the woman doing all the cooking. Seriously. If you're the woman doing all the cooking, learn to ask for help. Don't be a martyr. Learn to ask for help. Now, if the people that you've asked for help in the past make it worse, if they make a mess or they're lazy, oh, that? you know, that? right? Doyle. If they, no, he's great help. I'm just teasing. But if, but if, you know, if they're not very good at helping, give them something they can't mess up. You can run the Hoover. What are you going to hurt? Just to tell them, watch out for the cat. Don't run over the cat. <laughs> if you got to spell stuff out, you know, just you got to maybe write out some note cards for them, save some time, tape them to the Hoover you, so they see. No, don't do this. They can put water in the glasses. Put water in the glasses. You can't mess that up. Ice. Ice, something. Oh. Right? Kim again with the alcohol. Pour some wine. See, remind us. Yeah, pour some wine. So, but, but the point of all this is, is don't let yourself have a tumultuous holiday. Let yourself enjoy it. I personally have a lot to be grateful for. I thank God every day, every day for being alive. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? But every day, it's a toss-up. Right? And if you're in that position in your life, isn't that how? Kind of kind of wonder every day. You know, is this going to be the day? But I'm always glad. I'm always happy. And that... You know, I don't say that to pat myself. I am always happy. I'm happy to be alive. And the funny thing about it is there are a lot of wonderful people out there right now who, as we go into Thanksgiving, are sad because of loss. You know, maybe a relationship didn't work out. And they're remembering that. The, the hurt is still fresh. You know, whether it's a romantic relationship, a business relationship, a friend you've had a long time and they've done you wrong. Don't let it mess up everything. But you know, people are walking around. There's a lot of walking wounded in the world, and holidays are tough. Help those that you can. If you're the person that holidays really are tough times for you, ask for help. And then receive it. What would you like to play? Um, I'll just do one more, if that's right. okay. One more is perfect. Okay. Uh, this is just a song about family and love. All right. Well, how about that? And what love looks like. It's called That's What Love Looks Like. If I can find my pick. And uh, I wrote this with uh, one of my good girlfriends. She's one of my favorite people to write with. Her name's Vicki Ray. She actually wrote, was one of the co-writers on that last song, Try Love With Me. I don't know if she's listening, but shout out to her if she Shout is. out. What's her name? Vicki Ray. Vicki Ray.
Well, I'll tell you, it's been so much fun. It's always fun getting together with you. We have fun. Sometimes we go buy hats after closing hours at the mall. Yeah, we That do. happens. <laughs> that, ha- that has happened. Go on an adventure. The police officer, a guy, a new trooper I knew, he, originally he was, when I come around the corner, he was like, oh, uh, yeah, it's, we're closed. And then, but then when Lala walked around the corner, he's like, well, maybe we're not closed. I mean, we might not be. And uh, so I went up and talked to him as she's going and looking for her hats. And uh, he's like, so, uh, so what's, what's, what's the story on, you know, I was like, she's lives in Nashville. Don't worry about it. I was kind of protective, like a little sister. Um, but it thank was really you. weird because there, the, it, nobody was in the mall. It was close. I guess it was close. But. <laughs> oh, it was kind of funny. It was funny. But it worked out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and we didn't get locked in. That's a blessing. So it's just been such fun to have you. It's always fun to get together thank with you. Thank you for having me. Oh, are you thank kidding? You. Blast. Uh, La La Deaton Music. L-A-L-A-D-E-A-T-O-N Music. Or no, no, it's, it's just, just La La Deaton. Deaton.com. Right, I don't know what's on My La Deaton. My Facebook page is La La Deaton Music. That's so. right, that's what it is. La La Deaton Music on Facebook. Follow her on Facebook. Do you have a Twitter? I do, and that's also What do we call that? What do we, what do we call Deaton that? Music. When someone you you have Twitter... What do you, what is that called? I call it a Twitter. A Twitter. My son says I'm stupid. Yeah, a Twitter account. Oh, yeah. so that's right. A Twitter, a Twitter. account. A Twitter account. I don't have to say account. People know. She did. Right? But she said that to make you we all feel better. We just say you have, it's Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And it's yeah. all the same thing? On Instagram, I'm Lollipop Land. Okay. And Twitter, I am Lala Deaton Music. Facebook, I am Lala Deaton Music. Awesome. Awesome. Well, there you go. Well, it's been a blast. Tell you what let's do. We don't normally do this live on the air, but I want to do it this time. Let's close in prayer. And um, and just no matter where you are in the world, if you're driving, please don't close your eyes. Um, but uh, I'm just saying, I, why'd you crash your car? Well, I, the pastor was praying and I just closed my eyes. I won't be disrespectful. You know, just go ahead. God won't mind if your eyes are open. Father, we thank you so much for today. We just thank you uh, that you are not an awesome God. You are the awesome God. And we thank you that you mend fences and you mend hearts. And you quiet hearts and you comfort hurting, grieving hearts. And we thank you, Father, so much that you are willing to love us the way that you do. Perfect love, true love. And I thank you also for the love that you give us for each other. And I pray that we would find a way this Thanksgiving season to um, really tap into that. And I know we only get that through you. That's the only way we have a perfect love is through you first. And we thank you for being the conduit for that. But we pray that those around the world right now that are stressing hard about uh, the fried turkey catching on fire in the, in the, in, on the, you know, in the driveway or whatever, or, or not being done, or will the stove break down and all the different things that worry people. I just pray that you would lift all those worries for them and let them just have fun and enjoy all the many things that we have. And for those around the world who will be one short at dinner, I just pray, Father, that you will comfort them the only way you can. That's the only kind of comfort uh, that will make a difference is your comfort. The comfort comes from you. But give friends the the right thing to say and the bravery and courage to say it, or maybe uh, the smarts to not say anything at all, but just to hug and to love. And I just... Um, all those people, I just pray for them that it does. It's not an easy time. And Father, we just thank you so much for Lala. We just pray that you would keep her safe, give her every every great success uh, with her great great talent and her great great heart. And we pray that you'd comfort her and her sister and her family and the loss of her dear mother. What an amazing woman you are! Rejo- I bet probably she's writing music up there right now and having the harps and all the different things and coordinating all that. And I just. I thank you for a testimony. Um, You heard it said at her funeral that she's been preparing her whole life for this day. And I thank you, Father, for the knowledge that we can, we don't have to hope, we know. And we thank you for being that assurance, that blessed assurance. We pray this in the matchless name of your son, Yeshua. Amen. Amen.